All right, so I have to warn you that this boat is extremely messy right now. I'm not completely organized because I've been fishing for the past like five days. Um, but I'm gonna go over some of the specs of the boat real quick, then get into some of the tackle. Uh, then the rods a little bit. I already know I did a rod video. I'm just going to briefly go over some changes and adjustments that I've gone over with the rods. But let's start off with the back of the boat right here. The bread and butter of the boat is dude right here. This is a, I believe, 2010 Mercury 4-stroke 6 horsepower outboard motor. This little dude, um, I don't think we've ever winterized it, but it does a pretty good job. It seems to lag in the summertime, actually, but in the wintertime it starts right up, which is great. There's not much to this. I don't know a whole lot about motors. I do know how to winterize these, although I've never done it on this one. Um, but it's a, it's a reliable little motor. It's uh, it's not too fast, especially on this boat. You'd think that this boat would fly with the back of this, but this boat is extremely heavy. Really, really heavy boat. And uh, if it was on a, like a aluminum boat, it'd probably fly. But that's the motor on the back. Normally there is a 10 horsepower Merc, which is a 2013. But being that I had Andrew in the boat this weekend, I did not want to add the extra weight and that's significantly heavier, heavier than the six horse. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the front right here. Again, nothing too exciting. The motor we have is a hand motor. Um, the, I didn't want a, a foot pedal motor for this because there's not a whole lot of space on this deck. And also I've just really grown up with this one. I've gotten used to it over a course of a couple of years and it just feels, I don't know why, Andrew can't stand it, but it's something I've just kind of gotten used to. Of course I, I like the foot pedal motor, but on this boat I like the hand crank. And uh, this is a 36 pound Endura. It's very, very weak, but it actually chugs along with this little boat. Oh, sorry, I forgot to even mention what the boat name is. This right here, I get a bunch of bunch of flack for having this boat, but I love it. I don't care what you guys say. This dude right here is a, gosh, I want to say 2009 or 2010 Sun Dolphin Pro 120. There it is right there, folks. But uh, it's a great little rig. I mean, basically, it's like a little mini bass boat. The guys over in Japan use boats like this all the time because a lot of the lakes are small. And the lakes that I usually fish this with are pretty tiny as well, so I don't really need anything like that. Um, also on the front we have a Minn Kota deckhand. This also doesn't get too much use, but um, in the winter time I do, I do use it quite a lot. This time of year I don't use it as much because it's warm, but in the winter time I need to slow down and stop the boat and fish. I don't know much about this. My grandfather put this on here because he liked it. Runs on a 12 volt battery, um, 100 feet of 80 pound, 800 pound test nylon rope. Yeah, I don't even know why I'm going into this, but if it's an anchor on the front, uh, I usually run 20 or 30 pound anchors. On the back too has got another anchor. That one is hand cranked. But I don't think I've actually used me mechanical deckhand in quite some time. Okay, I'm trying to think what else I need to go over. Oh, so let me go over some of the compartments very quickly and then get onto some of the tackle and stuff that's on the boat. This right here is a live oil. It's very stinky. I just had a fish in it, but it runs very nicely aerator button right there. This all comes with the boat, by the way, and if you're wondering if this is aftermarket, it is not. It's got navigation lights, of course. I don't know what the hell this is, but here's the capacity on the boat. Um, yeah, four people, 489 pounds. I've definitely exceeded that in the past, but uh, it's a very nice little boat. It's got cleats on the back, too, so I can, wire, or I can strap down my tripod, which is very convenient. The gas tank is right here, and it runs all the way under there, and it connects to the motor. It's just a pretty straightforward setup, and I really like it. It's uh, It gets in and out of shallow water. It's not a deep V-haul. It's kind of like a cross between a V-haul and a flat bottom. So it gets up on plane kind of nicely, and it runs very, very easily. Okay. Okay, so now on to the front of the boat where I have my compartments of tackle. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the soft plastic compartment. These aren't all my soft plastic, but they're the ones that I bring in the boat with me. Also, I made a huge TWH order, so a lot of that uh, you're going to see in this little compartment right here. Boom, yeah, extremely overwhelming. Um, let's see, where do I start? Oh, here we go. Shout out to Dude Wipes for saving my ass. Uh, literally. <laughs> but I'm going to go over some of the baits that I've been catching them on lately. Z-Hog, by Zoom, and catching a bunch on that. Uh, this crank works pretty good here in dirty water. I've got trick worms. I, I throw them all in a pack, even though they're different colors, so they kind of morph. I've got stick baits in here. I probably have over 300 stick baits in here. Not packs, but just individual stick baits. These Z-Crawls are pretty cool. I've been catching a lot on these recently. That's what they look like out of the package, but those have been getting a lot of use. Um, I can organize my stuff, not very well, of course, as you see, but I also organize them in bags by color and brand, like type. So these are all worms. Um, these are like ribbon tail worms. There's some random stuff in there too, I guess. I thought this was all worms, but a bunch of random stuff as well. I'm not gonna open it up just because it's a real mess. I got some turds in here. Shout out to MTB. Um, let's see what else we got in here. 
Oh, uh, Ultra Vibe Speed Crawls. One of my favorite all time dirty water crawls. I have a bunch of these in here I could probably pull out. Let's see. I may have gone through a lot. But let's see. Here's another pack. But these dudes, if you aren't fishing them, you're crazy and you need to start fishing them because they work so good in dirty water. I've got like a bunch of, I ordered a bunch of Zoom on TWH. Here, here's some more of those Z Hogs. Ultra Vibe Speed Crawls. I mean, these things are straight money. I've already used a bunch of packs. Andrew and I went through a bunch. Here's some baby brush hogs, which work very well along with that in dirty water. I don't know, I've got a bunch in here, but I'm not gonna go into it. Here's like another pack of crawls. I got some Kai Tex in here. The baits that I usually run are Zooms, Yums, Berkeley. Um, I'm trying to think what other baits I use a whole lot of. I, I use big white baits because they're inexpensive. I also use a little bit of Biospawn as well. Their uh, Plasma Tail is probably one of my favorite lures they make. Like see, look, I've got like some <laughs> frogs in here I haven't even opened. But I, I mean, I could spend all day in this compartment. Basically, it's my soft plastic compartment. I know you guys want me to go over all of it. I'm just gonna start flashing some stuff here so you don't get too butt hurt. Oh, here we go. That's the color. Ultra Vibe Speed Cross. Not sponsored by Zoom. I wish I do. If you're watching, sponsor me. But, <laughs> but these uh, are literally rock. They're so awesome. I got I actually got two plastics in here with Dean Rojas' face. Dean the Machine. Dean the Machine. Met him at ICAST. Totally awesome dude. Um, great guy. Let's see. Oh, I've been meaning to fish this. This Mike McClellan Rock Crawler 55. If you guys use this, let me know how it is. They're pretty much like all sold out in TWH, so I gotta believe there's some good hype up on these. So that's that. Soft plastics, random baits that are still in packages stay in here. Oh wait, here's this behemoth of, oh shoot, it's falling out. This is all um, stick baits. I generally use BPS stick baits when I'm out for fun fishing, but if I'm fishing tournaments, which I hardly ever do, I'm fishing like uh, Yamamoto's or Jack of Flick Shakes. So that's the deal. All bunch of soft plastics. Uh, got a Sabeel. I don't know. Bunch of cool stuff. Been biting on this lately a whole lot. So that's that. I'm going to go over to, to some of the more exciting stuff. Okay, we have uh, hard baits and other random assortment of stuff here. I'm missing a few compartments. I know you guys are going to ask what size boxes these are. I forgot <laughs> completely after I bought them. The model number is WP... Let's see. If you can see that right there, WP5005. I know that's not the size, but that's the model number if you want to get these. Um, but I really like these. I just got them and they're awesome. Supposedly, this is what Flair was telling me. I didn't even know. I just bought them because they have the uh, seams on them so no water gets in. But if water does get in here, these tabs, let me, see, let me show you this. These tabs right here will absorb water. I don't know. Oh, this one doesn't have it. But there's little tabs, like little dividers, will actually absorb water. So you don't have to put little tabs in there, which is kind of a relief. That's what Flair was telling me. I don't know if that's true or not, um, but I believe his word. Anyway, I know I just completely skipped what was in that box, but I'm going to go over it. Okay, so if I can get this thing open, there we go. Yeah, start off with, I know this is really unorganized and I don't have that much stuff as most of you guys do, but it's still kind of cool and I need to really work on my organization skills. What we've got right here, um, swim baits, <laughs> just like a complete mess. This is probably my favorite swim bait. I need a tail, if you can make a tail for this, let me know, it needs to be very sturdy and strong plastic and it needs to match that size. This is probably worth a lot of money now. This is a discontinued Kiwami gill. It's one of my favorite and a lot of other fang anglers' favorite um, bluegill style swim bait. It just flat out catches fish. I've got a owner stinger on the front here and I need to put another hook on the back. Like I said, I'm very unorganized. I'm not very good with my tackle. These are all my frogs. I don't have that many frogs. I know I fish them a whole lot, but I go through them very quickly because they're always busting and breaking. But um, we've got some spitting waws in here, the bigger ones. I think it's like the 65 size. These are actually pretty good. They fill up with water kind of fast though. Other than that, they're pretty decent frogs. Um, Got spook baits and poppers. This is a classic head and Zara, Zara spook. Uh, got an I'm a skimmer, skimmer in here that needs hooks. AR lures, jackal, SK pop. Uh, jitterbug, underrated bass lure. A lot of beginners use this lure. It still works for the uh, the guys who actually want to bass fish and catch some nice bass. So this dude actually low key is an awesome bait. Uh, one of my favorite baits to throw in top water. Believe it or not, that doesn't belong there. Uh, Buzz, Jet, Buzz Jet Jr. I'm a heliprop, which are a lot less expensive than I bought it. I think when I bought this, it was like $16. Now they're a lot less expensive. This is a Sanford Cedar uh, prop bait. These, dude, these, these rat baits rock. Um, Bill Simantel was telling me a lot about these rat baits and 
they're awesome. I've been catching a lot, a lot on this size, which I believe is the, gosh, 30 or 40. I don't know. It's a 30 or 40 size. But that color, too, works really well. That yellow tail gets them going and pisses them off. I might throw that snide, actually. And then under here, I have a jackal gear on, one of the first ones before they started making the gontrials or however you pronounce it. That's that. Uh, I really like these boxes, though. Like I said, it keeps the water out and supposedly keeps your hooks from rusting if there is some water in there. So over here, I've got my swim jigs, my mediocre selection of swim jigs and other random jigs and blade baits. Got some random spoons in here for, I don't know, just spooning. <laughs> uh, dirty jigs, swim jigs, I've had this thing forever. It's got like a little Berkeley creeper on the back. Here are some Lanier swim jigs, which I really, really like. I want to compare the new and old ones and how Chris from Lanier Jigs has really upped his game in his production and how he makes his jigs. That's the old um, Lanier swim jigs. I don't know why I have that trailer on. That looks really stupid, but this is the old Lanier swim jigs. They worked great. They caught me a bunch of fish, but the hook was a little too weak, and uh, that style wasn't perfect for swim jig fishing. The weed guard was on point. The head was on point. It's just some of the other components lagged. So what Chris did is he came out with these brand new kick butt swim jigs. And I did a video on the old ones, and I'm super stoked that he came out with these ones too because they catch fish. I've been using them for the past couple of days, and they flat out catch fish. The head design looks a lot better. It comes through brush a lot easier. And dude, look at that hook. That is a swim jig hook. And the weed guard is super perfect for this application. So shout out to Chris. Check him out if you haven't already uh, purchased some of his jigs. I got some other ones in here too. This one is the one I've been catching them on lately. I, put, I had to put a stinger on hook, stinger hook on them just because the water's so dirty. That's an awesome color too for dirty water. And uh, here's some of his jigs he sent me that I haven't opened yet. Uh, that's his swim jig in a bluegill color, I believe. He's got arcade style, football head style. Look at the paint on this, dude. I don't know if you can see that, but that's sweet. He spends a lot of time. Hand-tied, uh, handcrafted swim jigs. Uh, I had a football head one in here. I don't know where it went off to, but he's got cool stuff. Oh, there's a football head. Boom. Yeah, one-man team. Uh, I mean, I think he's got some people helping him now, but he's a dude in high school. He's a year younger than me, and he pumps out one of my favorite swim jigs out in the market. Okay, let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> regular jigs. Nice. These are not all my regular jigs. I've got a bunch floating around in the boat and in the dock house. But I would say 90% of everything in here is all-terrain. Um, just one of my favorite jigs. And I'd say probably 80% of all these jigs in here, the head styles are, they're skipping jigs because they sit on the bottom very nicely. They flat out come through cover very easily too. Uh, let's see if I can show you one right here. This is the skipping jig. It looks like a swim jig, but that flat bottom skips under low-hanging trees and brush very easily. I love these jigs. But my favorite colors are black and blue, watermelon red, uh, flake, PB&J. They don't have a whole lot of colors, but the colors they do have are pretty freaking sweet. So, jig box, done. Swim jig box, done. Um, assortment of random lured box is also done. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Terminal tackle, which is also lagging. And I need to organize it better because I got a bunch of random ots in one compartment. I don't have too much. I got a bunch of tongues and I need to organize them. This is actually really embarrassing. I can't believe I'm showing you this. But I got like uh, some pegs in here. Freaking finesse hooks. Oh, this dude's really cool. I want to do a video on this guy. This is that Reigns sliding football. It's in Japanese. That's pretty authentic. But it's in matte black color. 3 8 ounce size. I'm super stoked to Carolina rig that here in the near future. Um, some Zapu Mustang heads work very well uh, and then some decoy cover finesse hooks perfect for fishing around grass and timber swim bait heads shaky heads flip weights tungsten I always throw tungsten um, this is that Zapu flip weight for doing the backwards as you take your rig tungsten hooks flip hooks uh, these are I don't know what the hell these are called but they're called a random something like I said, I need to up my game a whole lot. I've got a bunch of finesse stuff, and i got more hooks. I just need to put them in this box. This is just kind of temporary going away to college organization for you. Um, not very well done. I think we have one more box in here. Well, I think we got a box in the back, too. This is my shallow diving crankbait box and lipless crankbait box. Um, just going to go over some of the brands I really like to use. I have a bunch in here that don't even have hooks. Most of these don't even have hooks because they got rusted out in one of my trips, so I need to change that. Uh, larger crankbaits, like 2.5s. Most of these are Strike Kings, uh, 1.5s and stuff like that. Got the Level Crank, a Rishi Shed, which I'm trying out. Haven't caught a fish on it yet, but it looks really good, and I like that color. Um, Lucky Craft LVs, I don't know what 
numbers these are, but they're on some of them were on sale at TWH or um, at Cabela's. So I picked them up. Uh, Norman Shallow End or something like that. I don't know what it's called. Cotton Cordell. These cranks are low key awesome too. I use a bunch of them, and they catch me fish. You just got to change out the hooks. I I normally always change out the hooks on my on my cranks. There's a bomb or two. You can pick these up at Walmart for like a dollar to two dollars, especially in the in the, uh, in the sale bin. And if you put new hooks on them and you take care of them, they're awesome cranks, and they catch you a bunch of fish. It's just a little tip for you. All right, back here I got two more boxes of baits, both hard baits. Um, let's see what we got here. Deep diving crankbaits, again, a lot of my hard baits don't have hooks. Got a section of 6XDs, I don't know. I think they're 6XDs, I'm not sure. Ridiculously deep dive in AP, or no, this is not those ABT. This is um, bonehead, bonefish tackle or bonehead tackle. I forget which one it's called, but I think it's bonehead tackle. Deep diving crankbait. This thing literally gets down to 22 feet. It's ridiculous. Uh, Lure Jensen deep diving crank, Bagley deep diving crank, Copper. I've never really caught it. I caught fish on this, this and the lure johnson but never this rapala and that other one um most of these are strike kings 6xds 3xds uh got some rapels in here too i only only use the dt series by rapel i'm not a huge rapel fan just not a huge fan of the quality on their baits they, they swim and they catch fish very well but the quality isn't that amazing got a got a bandit in here also a lucky craft as well a lot of these crankbaits need to get changed out and upgraded and I don't have much tackle. You know, I think you guys think I have a ton of stuff. And this may be a ton of stuff to some people, and I understand that. But I just don't have that much stuff. I need more. But who doesn't always need more? Here's my weak selection of jerk baits. This is in a different box. I don't know what this is. I think this is a Frable or something like that. But, uh, 110s. Uh, freaking, what is this called? Darter? Shiner? I forget what this is called. It's a Mega Bass Darter. It's the trick darter that's what it's called uh then some ra other random lucky crafts in here this one's a river to see deep diving uh jerk bait i got them in a couple of different sizes but i'm not gonna go too much into that you can see for yourself you'll know the names of them onwards to my spinner bait box uh this is where i keep like where well, i keep drinks here but i put my spinner baits in here for now and some scents which are all over the place i'm not gonna even touch those scents one of those exploding, it smells like a freaking crawdad down there. Got sunscreen there too, 50 SPF. It's a way to roll. <laughs> but here's my spinnerbait box. I just got this too. This is a Plano Hydro Flow hanging lure box. I didn't realize it had holes on the bottom too. I thought it was just on the top. But the idea behind it is it keeps everything dry. I don't know, it seems kind of weird. Whatever, we'll see how it works. Uh, not a whole lot of spinnerbaits. My spinnerbait game used to be strong as heck, but I don't have a whole lot. Uh, some of these are max tackle. Uh, uh, Santone, I believe that's how you pronounce them, spinner baits in there as well. Some peppers, some Omega Customs. Uh, I got a river to see in there as well. Buzz baits. Uh, this one's a clue, Custom Lures Unlimited. Helix swim bait, or uh, buzz bait, which is okay. I don't know, did I say buzz bait or swim bait? I don't know, but these are buzz baits. You guys know that. And then some like darker color pattern uh, spinner baits in there as well. But I really need to up my game in that sense. But that's my compartment, in case you were wondering. And that's going back in there. I'm like I said, I'm not gonna even touch those scents. I'm not gonna go into them too because I don't want to talk bad about the company. But they exploded. It's not that yum one down there, by the way. But that's that. Um, gonna take a quick moment just to talk about some of the stuff that's on my deck because it's an absolute mess and it's kind of an eyesore. But it tells a story as to what we've been catching on lately. So, speed crawls, like I said, money, young crop poppies, awesome baits, um, Z crawl by Yum. Awesome bait as well. Been catching them on Senkos, poppers. They've been missing the poppers like all hell, but been catching them on them. This is what a stupid catfish did to this popper. Uh, Slither K, I haven't caught anything on it, but I got a bunch of blow ups. Another crop poppy. This color works actually a lot better lately than that color, which is, I think this is blue sapphire or black light or something like that. And this is like a PB. No, this is brim. This color is brim. It's been catching me a bunch of fish. This is black light. It's a sweet color. It's almost like a blue and purple with, with black. Uh, the purple flake shows up really well. Um, brush hogs, not a whole lot of fish on these. Haven't caught anything on that. Yeah, but as you may be able to tell, the, the speed crawl really has been producing a lot of fish. Oh, I don't even think I've used Oh, yeah, I have. But uh, I need to put some of these back because some of them still have tungsten on them, just like that one, too. Anywho, that's the deal. Uh, this has caught me a few fish, too. I've been using it as a trailer. I'm going to go back there, show you some of my 
techniques I like to do when I'm organizing stuff. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go over some of the rods. A couple new rods that I've been that I picked up since we last spoke. Uh, AP Bassin hooked me up with this rod because I gave him my final cut. Um, and it's a decent rod. It's a six or seven six, fast action, medium heavy, uh, swim bait rod. It's a Pow One Fernal. It's like a flipping swim bait rod. But I put a little butt balancer on there too, so it's not as tip heavy anymore. Haven't caught any fish on it. Just got it. So shout out to uh, Lame P Bassin for hooking me up with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, got that omen there. You guys have seen a video on that. But here's an up close look. Sweet rod. Not a super long length, but it works for top water. And that's about it. And I've got. He's all new rod rod socks on here. Uh, well, rod, these are rod gloves, actually. And what I'm going to start doing is the solid green ones are going to be for, like, slow-moving baits, like jigs and soft plastics, and the ones that are black and neon green are going to be for fast-moving baits. But I need to get more socks for that, and I'm not even sure if that's even worth the money. But I need I do need socks because they're really important to protect the guides in your rod, and I hate getting guides rewrapped. I absolutely hate that. So, down here, we got some line. Some sunlight. I've been throwing uh, this PI on lately. It works pretty good, pretty abrasion resistant. I haven't popped anything off yet. I've been throwing the, let's see, I got 15, 20, 15 pound test is what I've been using lately. Have that on the Concept C. I got 20 and 8. And I got some FC um, reaction. Some really, I hate this stuff. This is, oh no, this isn't that bad. This is the um, monofilament, which isn't too bad. And got some braid. SX1, which I don't like as much as SX2. Got some more line here, some trial line. I think Flair left that. Got some random stuff as well over here. Uh, clamps or wires. I don't know why that's in here. Hand sanitizer, because you always got to keep clean. You know what it is. Uh, some replacements for my deeper. I need to replace that actually here in a little bit. And some hooks. I got plenty more of these. I just keep them in here because these are the ones I really like. These are those round bend gammas that I was talking about. And these are EWG gammas, short shanks. Bunch of random lures that need to be organized. And that's that. So over here, I've got some uh, storage things I want to go over. When I'm transporting my stuff from like boat to boat or car to car or whatever, I'm using these TWH uh, bags. They're like a dollar ninety nine on their website. And I can fit all my stuff in here. Like I have one for soft plastics and hard containers. This one has some random stuff in it. Uh, like I feel like a shirt in here. Uh, a bunch of random loose plastics. Some river to sea stuff. A big old Paul ice bag of jelly worms, which I do use, but not often. Marker buoy, some Kytex, some impacts, or no, seismic rubs, sorry. Uh, what else? Big, big bag of flip baits, which you can't really see. But like I said, this is where I transport all my good stuff. Oh, I got a bunch of drop shot baits in here too. Got the Flash J by Fish Arrow in here. Some Jackal, some Charlie's Worms. Um, some more hooks. Yeah, but that's that. And I, I use these to transport my stuff from boat to boat. It's like a temporary kind of deal. I don't always keep them in there, but when I do, it's usually when I'm going from uh, one place to another. Uh, I got my deeper back here. I use this especially in the wintertime. I don't use it as much right now because I'm fishing shallow water, but it really comes into play when I'm fishing deep or need to mark some fish. Got my... MTB back here because I was doing some pictures with that and I got my call board just so I could keep track of the length of my fish Because uh, I spent a whole lot of time measuring the fish in here and seeing how the health is doing also got my rappel scale as well That's about it for the most part. Hope you guys enjoyed I know that some people may not like this type of video But uh, I've been getting a ton of requests to do a rundown of not necessarily my boat But the boat I use when I'm out in this lake. It's a nice little boat if you fish small waters, I would highly recommend it, but if you're fishing anything over that's above 200 acres, I would not suggest it because, you know, it doesn't run too fast with, a, with even a nine horse in the back, even if you can get it on a decent plane just because it's so heavy. But that's all my tackle, that's all my equipment for the most part. I mean, I've got some stuff back at home uh, in Illinois and that's not in camera right now, but that's kind of the main stuff that I'm generally using uh, for the most part when I'm on the water. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Bass Daily number three, I believe it is. Catch you guys next time on the next episode of Fishing the Midwest.